guys, in this episode, we're going to be talking about filters in Pixie.js. So filters allow you to apply post-processing effects onto objects within your scene. And Pixie.js comes with a few built-in filters that you can apply to objects, but you can also create custom filters using GLSL shaders in WebGL. So let's dive in. So we're gonna start with our project from episode two that uses Pixie application just to get up and running quickly. And applying filters to objects within your scene is actually really easy. All display objects have a filters property. So what we can do is we can simply access that on our image or our sprite here, and it takes an array. And this means that you can apply multiple filters to a single display object. And as I mentioned, Pixie.js has a bunch of built-in filters that we can access. And you can see those in their documentation. So you can see that we have um, a bunch of different filters here on their website that they list out. And these are just the ones that they have built in. So they have an alpha filter, which allows you to apply an alpha effect to groups and have them respect the same alpha setting as the group and change altogether. We have a blur filter, which seems pretty obvious, and a bunch of others like displacement and other cool color matrix um, filters that you can apply to different objects within your scene. So let's go ahead and apply one of these filters. So let's add a blur filter to our sprite. So we just do new pixie.filters blur filter. You'll see we now have a blur applied to our sprite. And this takes a couple of parameters and you can adjust the settings, the blurriness of the sprite, um, things of that nature. So that's pretty much it for the built-in filters. You can dive in and see all the different effects that you can do with it. But what I wanna get into is how you could actually create your own effects to create more elaborate filters using GLSL shaders. So now we're going to create our own custom filter called my filter. And you do that by creating a filter object. So we're gonna define my filter as new pixie filter. And it takes a few parameters. So it takes a vertex shader, a fragment shader, and, a, and uniforms. So we're going to define these objects. And for now, uniforms we're just going to have be an empty object. We're not really worried about those yet, but we are going to create the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So let's start with the vertex shader. And the vertex shader, what that is, is it allows us to manipulate the vertices within 3D space. So when you're dealing with WebGL, you're always working with 3D objects and these points exist in 3D space. So even though we're dealing with 2D, we still need a vertex shader that handles points in 3D space. Now, because it's 2D, we're actually not super concerned with it, and we can just kind of copy and paste the vertex shader from existing shaders in, or filters in Pixie and reuse that in this case. So if you go to their repository, you can actually find the default vertex shader that they use within their filters. And under default.vert, we can just kind of take this and copy and paste it into our code and reuse that. So in order to create our shader, we need to create a script tag and give it the ID vert shader and give it the type x shader vert just so the browser doesn't interpret it as JavaScript and then what we can do is we can just paste in our code that we found on github as our vertex shader and then next we're going to do our fragment shader give that the ID frag shader the type 
x shader x frag. And just like our vertex shader, this has a main method. Um, so we can do void main. And it returns a variable called gl frag color. And basically what a fragment shader does is it colors the pixels and draws the pixels of the object being drawn into our scene. So our vertex shader defines the vertices and their positions within the flat canvas that you're drawing. And then the fragment shader then draws and renders the colors and the pixels that are drawn into your scene. So we need to, defi to define this geofrag color variable for, for all of the pixels within our object. So we need a couple other variables here. And one of those is a varying of type vec2 called v texture chord. And don't worry too much about what these are yet. You can kind of just copy these verbatim and then play around with the values to create effects you want, or look at examples of other shaders and figure out how to get those into um, this format. And then we need a uniform, which is a sampler 2D, a view sampler. So what these are are our texture coordinates, coordinates of our texture, and then the sampler 2D is the actual like image and texture of the um, sprite or the object that we're, that's being drawn. And so then what we do is we then set our geofrag color to texture 2D U sampler V texture chord. So we're creating a new texture 2D using the sampler 2D, that texture of the display object that we're drawing and the, its coordinates um, based on its positioning within the scene. And so then we can use those and define our vertex and fragment shaders based on the text that we used within those script tags. So what we can do is we can say v shader is vert shader dot inner HTML and f shader is frag shader dot inner HTML. And then we've got our uniforms and our shaders being passed in and then we've got our filter being applied to our sprites filters. So we should be able to test that out and hopefully we get our normal sprite rendering exactly the way it should be. And our filter is actually applied here. It's just not doing anything other than drawing things onto the screen. So now that we have our filter applied, what we can do is we can actually play around with our filters inside of our fragment shader and manipulate things and see what kind of effects we can create. So let's do that. So let's go up into our fragment shader here and let's go in and create a new variable. And this is gonna be of type vec4 and we'll, we'll just call it color. So what this is going to be is our, us defining our gl frag color variable. And so we're just gonna set it to what we were using before, except now what we wanna do is we wanna manipulate it. So let's see what happens. Um, since it's of type vec4, that means that it has four values and that's your RGBA. So your red, green, blue, and alpha channels. So what we can do is we can access those individually. We can say color.r equals one. And let's just see what that does. So here you can see we have the red value set to one for every single pixel that's being drawn on that display object. And you can of course do this with all of the colors or even play with the alpha channel value here. Um, and it will change those values as well. So now what I wanna do is I wanna change things inside of our filter at runtime. So let's say we wanna go through and manipulate 
something dynamically within our filter. How can we do that? Well, that's where uniforms come in. So remember, we created this uniforms value, but we didn't have anything in it. So what we can do is we can actually populate that with values. So let's, for example, create a delta value of zero. And then what we can do is update that value on our animation loop so that it changes over time. So let's create a delta that, so let's remove our animation for now and let's increase our delta by a little bit with each animation loop. And then what we'll do is we'll set our uniform delta to 0.5 plus math.sign delta times 0.5, which will have us oscillating between zero and one. So this will oscillate the value of delta between zero and one over the course of our animation. And if we go back to our fragment shader, what we can do is we can create a new uniform that accesses the value of that variable. So this will be of type float. And then we can set the red value to our delta and it should update over time as it animates. So let's go ahead and check that and see if our red value is now changing. So there's our red value changing based on that delta value it's between zero and one. So of course you can do other interesting things here. Like for example, we could check um, if the colors alpha does not equal zero. Then we set the, um, the values and there it's only changing non-transparent pixels within our display object. So hopefully this is a good place to help you get started and start getting comfortable playing around with custom filters and shaders within Pixie.js. I know GLSL can be super intimidating when you first start out, especially coming from the JavaScript side of things, but there are a lot of resources out there and even just examples that you can kind of copy and paste and play with out there on the web to kind of get more comfortable with and play around with these values and see what they do and see what you can change to create interesting visual effects. So that's it for my episode on filters in Pixie.js. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.